Hello, William here again. Now this week, something a little offbeat. Now, during my uh, extensive military service, I was lucky enough to serve in uh, many overseas locations, but perhaps the most memorable was a long secondment uh, to the Royal Brunei Armed Forces. Now, Brunei is a tiny gas and oil rich sultanate uh, that sits on the north coast of uh, Borneo on the coastline of the South China Sea. Uh, the country is extremely rich in culture and uh, biodiversity, uh, most of the land mass being given over to uh, pristine rainforest with some nipa swamps. Now, when I was resident there, there seemed to be uh, three particular sports that the local population were very keen on. Uh, the first one being karaoke, uh, the second being kite flying, and the third being gassing. What's gassing? Gassing is uh, a competitive sport based on spinning tops. <laughs> Now, uh, there doesn't seem to be any particular design parameters for these tops, uh, but they are traditionally made of local hardwoods, of which there are a lot of course, uh, but the most favoured is a wood called Bua Berembang, which is typically found along the coast, uh, right next to the beach. Now, as far as I'm aware, these tops are not uh, made or available commercially, but they are turned locally, typically on a pole lathe, uh, making each one unique. Now, typically, the upmarket versions of these tops, or the ones that I've seen at least, include a finial and a metal ferrule at the top, and also a metal pinion in the base on which the top revolves. So this week's project then, I'm going to design and turn a Brunei style gassing top. Now, I don't have a, a good understanding of the game itself, but it does involve at least two people, particularly uh, teams of four. Uh, the object being to uh, keep your top spinning as long as possible while knocking the opponent's top out of the game circle. Now, the top is deployed, if you want to call it that way, by using a fairly thick hemp rope which has been impregnated with gum to make it sticky which is round uh, around the top of the top uh, and flung with one hand. Okay after rummaging around for half an hour in my wood pile in 40 mile an hour winds I found this uh, I think it's a piece of some kind of red cedar. Now Cedar, of course, I don't think it grows in the tropics, so this is not uh, this wouldn't be used in reality. But uh, this particular piece will never see any practical use. Uh, it's going to be an ornament, so I think that the red cedar uh, will look quite nice when it's finished. Okay then, this bit of cedar is currently about 10, 9, 8, 9 inches by uh, 7 inches, but what I want to end up with is something about seven inches in diameter, uh, six inches long, with probably an inch of the brass rod protruding at the bottom. That would give it then some uh, originality and shape. Now this piece of wood is quite irregularly shaped, so the first thing I want to do is to actually uh, find the centres and trim it up on the bandsaw before I mount it on the lathe. So having got the blank roughed out on the bandsaw, I now want to mount it between centres, get it roughed out and see what uh, wood I have to play with. And the sweet spot in terms of RPM for this particular piece of wood seems to be about 460 at the moment, but I will be able to increase this as it becomes more balanced.
Now I'm just going to square off the ends at this stage uh, to make it more balanced uh, and to make the uh, piece of wood the right length for the project. Now here I'm just reminding myself of the profile of the project and how the rope is going to sit on the top. Now when using any gouge of course it's uh, advantageous to use both sides of the blade otherwise you're sharpening it only having dulled half of the edge. Now I saw a posting on the group uh, Grit and Sheen in Facebook last week somebody asking what happens to their wood shavings. Firstly the toxic uh, output, uh, you and laburnum for instance, uh, will go to landfill. Everything else I uh, produce will either end up with my chickens or in the compost heap. Having effectively uh, made a blank for this project, I want to mount it on the worm screw initially so that I can drill an 8mm hole in the other end. Now once I've successfully got it uh, mounted on the worm screw, I'll just need to retrue it. So the next stage then is to quickly mark out the centre lines uh, and then to remind myself of what the final shape is supposed to look like and then to rough turn it. As I mentioned right at the beginning of the video, the top actually spins on a piece of brass rod. Now I think I can use this to help me mount it in the lathe a bit further down the line. Now I'll grip the base of the spinning top in the headstock using the Jacobs chuck. Now to secure the top of the project into the tailstock, I'm going to turn an adapter uh, for my live centre. Now the live centre and the project will be connected by the cut off piece of the brass rod. Now having remounted the piece uh, successfully using the two pieces of brass rod, I just need now to complete the profiling uh, with my 3 8 of an inch uh, spindle gouge. Now at this point I had a random thought to actually colour the item to make it darker in appearance than the cedar wood. Now I've used the two intrinsic colours uh, ruby and honey which work very very well together and I decided to uh, opt for the same combination but with a heavier emphasis on the ruby. Now after the application of the colour I sanded it back to 400 grit after it fully dried, then moved on to three coats of a pre-thinned sanding sealer and finally uh, to two applications of Yorkshire grit. 
After that, I applied a couple of coats of Hampshire Sheen High Gloss. This project requires two additional components. Uh, the first being a handle to secure to the end of the rope, and the second is uh, a short uh, crude finial which sits on the crown of the top. Now I use the end of an old broomstick to turn these two items, uh, which was something I just had lying around in the workshop. Now, I'm not too sure about the purpose of the finial that sits on the crown of the top, uh, whether this is for decoration or for balance. By the way, it's very lucky for me, as I'm a master at turning short crude finials. Okay, so, overnight, looking at the uh, spinning top in the cold light of the morning, I didn't like the finish, so what I've done this morning off camera is to strip it all off and refinish it. Now, this time, uh, I sanded it back. I recolored it exactly the same, applied some sanding sealer. But on this occasion, I decided to uh, finish it with Hampshire Sheen uh, Gloss Lacquer. Now, I'm not a lacquer man at all. I've only used it on a couple of occasions before with not much success. However, this time I threw caution to the wind and I wasn't disappointed at all with the outcome. Also, off camera, I've finished the uh, finial, such as it is, and also the handle for the rope. Uh, and I finished these exactly the way as I finished the top. Uh, the colours should be reasonably the same. Okay, so the final part of this project is to actually uh, assemble it. I have the finial to fit, uh, the handle to fit to the uh, four millimetre hemp rope that I've acquired for this project, and basically that's it. So I've just mixed up a little epoxy resin to glue the finial in place. Now since the spinning top is in fact an ornament, I'm going to use a bit of double sided tape to secure the rope to the spinning top. Before I do that, I'm just going to do uh, a test wind of the rope to the top to, to uh, determine the length of rope that I actually need. I'm going to secure the handle to the rope simply by tying a knot in it. So now I'm just going to wind off a few lengths of the rope, add the double sided tape to stop it slipping off. Okay, so there we have it then, one Gassing or Malaysian Brunei spinning top, um, turned from some red cedar, but ends up looking like Coca-Bola. Now, as you know, I don't often like my own work, but this, I must say, is very pretty and very easy and pleasing on the eye. Now, I like it, despite the fact that it's a completely uh, inanimate, useless article. It's an ornament, in fact. I think I made a very good call um, removing the first finish, which I wasn't happy with for some reason. I don't know why. It's my default finish, which is usually very good. Um, and the first outing with the Hampshire Sheen um, High Gloss Lacquer was outstanding. I'm a convertee. Now, I did post a photograph of this project whilst it was being turned uh, from my workshop, uh, from the uh, night vision of a security camera um, 
just as a kind of a teaser to see if anybody could actually work out what I was doing. The very first comment that was put on by Stephen Just uh, down there in Brisbane was a giant spinning top. Huh. I couldn't believe that somebody would get it first guess. Well I certainly enjoyed this project, I hope you enjoyed it too and I hope to see you again next week. Mm -hmm.